Once upon a time, there lived a doctor named Gulliver. There came a time when there was no work to be found in the city. So Gulliver found a job on a ship. This way, his new life had begun on shore. The first few days, it went pretty good. He was getting used to his new life on the ship. But one day, a very strong thunder struck. After struggling in the huge waves for some hours, in the end, the ship tipped over. Gulliver and a few of the crew managed to get some rowing boats on the boat before it sank. Short while after their ship sank, it disappeared. They couldn't stay on this rowing boat for too long and soon after a strong wave hit them and this boat, like the ship, also tipped over. They scattered all over the place. For hours, Gulliver struggled to stay above the water. He was trying to stay alive. In the end, the current helped him manage to hit ashore. He was very tired now. He had no idea as to where he was. Besides, he was in no state to think. He fainted right there on the shore. When he woke up, he noticed he had been tied up from head to toe. Surrounding him, he saw little tiny people as small as his palm. With amazement, Gulliver was staring at these little people. And with the same reaction, the little people were staring at him. Right at that moment, Gulliver felt a tingle all over his body. When he put his head up to see what it could be, he noticed his whole body covered in tiny arrows. The very frightened little people were throwing arrows at him. Please stop, don't. I won't hurt you, don't worry. For a few days, they kept him there with his hands and feet tied up. They gave him food and water. After some days had passed, they tied him on a car that was pulled by hundreds of tiny little horses, taking him to their hometown. This little town was called Lilliput. They saved the largest building in the town for him. But even so, to get inside the house, he had to crawl. Seeing that Gulliver meant no harm to them, they decided to introduce him to their king. Gulliver approached Lilliput's king. The king allowed him to stay. But in order to stay, he told him that he must work and help around the city as much as he could. Gulliver signed a piece of paper that stated the do's and don'ts. For example, if he wanted to pick someone up with his hands, he needed to have permission. Under these circumstances, Gulliver began living in Lilliput. He was helping with the renovations of the buildings and carrying water to the locals. After some days had gone by, he found out a big problem amongst the little people. The neighbouring country's army wanted to occupy Lilliput. In order to do so, they were getting ready for war. Gulliver went over to the king and proposed to help. If you like, I can help you out, your highness. The king was happy. He first thanked him then accepted his offer. At that time, the neighbouring country's ships had finished their preparations. They were waiting for their order to proceed. This news got all the town worried. On the other hand, for Gulliver, it was too easy. He asked everyone to find as much wire as they could and bring it to him. Gulliver joined all the wire they bring to him and made a very long and strong piece of string. When it was midnight, he got the long string of wire and crossed to the other side of shore. 
without being seen to the enemy, he managed to get to the port on the other side. He tied all the ships to one another and with the very few soldiers that were inside, he pulled them to Lilliput's shore. The people waiting for him at the port were super happy. They had imprisoned the enemy's soldiers. They now had no reason to be scared of the enemy. The king thanked Gulliver and rewarded him. Gulliver was very happy he had gained the king's trust. A while later, there was a fire in the castle. The moment he heard about the fire, Gulliver took one of the ships in the harbour, filled it with water and poured it on the castle, putting off the fire immediately. Gulliver and the king were getting along very well. Before making a decision, the king was always asking Gulliver first. Of course, this started to get in the way of the other advisers to the king. They were envious of Gulliver. Your Highness, we hear rumours. Gulliver is planning to get stronger and take your position as the king of Lilliput. Really? Yes, my king. We all know how strong he is. We can't defend ourselves if he attacks us. Mm. We can't live in fear like this. Public is also on its toes. The king was well affected by his advisers and he decided to punish Gulliver. Considering the good he's done before, I won't give him the death penalty. His eyes will be blinded, he will be forbidden to go into town, and his food will be limited. When he heard about the king's decision, one of the workers in the castle who loved Gulliver ran right next to Gulliver to tell him all about it. I can talk to the king and change his mind. But the decision was made and the king had no intentions to change his mind. Gulliver finally understood that his only option was to leave. At night, taking the enemy ships in the harbour with him, he began to move towards the island across. He walked and swam and finally came to the island of what people called the enemy. When Gulliver returned their ships, they understood that he didn't have bad intentions. With the guide next to him, they sent Gulliver to meet with the king. The king properly welcomed Gulliver, and Gulliver told him all that had happened. The king told him that he could stay as long as he wanted. Gulliver was really surprised of this kind gesture after he stole their ships, because he hadn't seen this kind of behaviour in Lilliput. Gulliver was staying out at night, since there was no house big enough for him. People of Lilliput think this kingdom is the enemy, but actually they're all good people. One day, when he was walking about, he found a rowing boat. This was clearly the boat that they were on after his ship had sunk. Apparently our boat hit the shore on this island. He immediately went to the king. The king gave him all the men he needed. They all began to repair the boat. In a few days, the boat was ready for shore. Gulliver was very happy because he could leave the kingdom of the little people and go home. He thanked the king and his people who welcomed him. But a tough journey was waiting for him on this small boat in the big ocean. <sighs> Even the small storm will sink my boat. <laughs> After a couple of days on the ocean, he came across a ship. He began yelling for help. Hey! Here! Help me! Hey. Finally, they heard him. They came next to the rowing boat and took Gulliver on their ship. And so Gulliver was safe. 
He was anxious to tell about all that had happened. The little people, the kingdom of Lilliput, and the kings of the two kingdoms. He wondered who would believe him about all that had happened. Gulliver felt very happy that he was going to go home to see his family. But he also felt there were many more adventures waiting for him out there in the big ocean. If Snow White wouldn't have eaten the apple the old lady had given her, if Cinderella would have forgotten about midnight and kept on dancing with the prince, if the little mermaid wouldn't have rescued the prince from the sinking ship, and if Hansel and Gretel would have not entered the cake house, or if the little red riding hood wouldn't have told the wolf where she was going. None of these fairy tales would have existed. They took us to exciting adventures on magical lands we have never seen. They raced against evil sometimes, and sometimes it was against time. They showed us the true meaning of passion, love, friendship, helpfulness, sharing, and being a family. We cried together. We laugh together, but in the end, we always learn something. Full of the most beloved and beautiful fairy tales, Addis Ababa Children's Classics Channel is on YouTube.